Using Mathematica, it's very easy to find the derivative of a function. And this is because differentiation is an algorithmic process. So pretty much any function you give to a computer, it can spit out the, the derivative in, in a fraction of a second. So let's take a look at some examples. What you want to do uh, is define the function you're, you're taking the derivative of. And you want to define it in Mathematica, because we want to work symbolically on, on functions. So I'm going to go f of x underscore and when you define a function you put the underscore in the definition but you never ever use the underscore otherwise so it's f bracket x underscore close bracket colon equals this is it always starts the same way when you define a function and let's suppose that my function is is this one x squared over x plus uh, x squared Now, in general, this, this, uh, taking the derivative of this function by hand is time-consuming, and everyone should know how to do it by hand, but uh, usually when you're in another class like physics or chemistry, uh, you don't want to be burdened with doing this by hand, so you want to be able to work symbolically on, on these uh, functions. So find, to find the derivative is very easy. I just go f, and then I use that prime notation. So it's f apostrophe bracket x, and then hit or shift return. And there it's computed the, the derivative. You can try simplify, but sometimes the simplify command in Mathematica, sometimes it produces a nice result, sometimes it doesn't. When you simplify it in, in this particular problem, you get a nice result. It's 1 over um, x plus 1. Actually, I like this function is easy to differentiate by hand. You can factor out the x, and then you get cancellation. So let me uh, change it to 1 plus this. Now it's a harder function to differentiate by hand. But notice that when I, when I change the, the function, now when I go to find the derivative, I don't have to change anything here. It's still the same expression. And this is the power of working symbolically with uh, on expressions. I'm going to go ahead and delete this cell. And then now if I want to simplify this, I just hit that. And there it is, uh, simplified, as far as mathematics is concerned. Sometimes the simplification is good. Sometimes it's, it's not so good. In this problem, it, it, it's fine. So this is the derivative of the function. If I want the second derivative, I just go f double prime, so apostrophe, apostrophe, and then x. And there's the second derivative. Uh, finding the second derivative of this problem is a real pain. Uh, doing it in the computer is very simple. Again, you can simplify it. There you go. You can find the third derivative, so I can go f triple prime of x. And you can keep going by putting primes. Now, if you wanted to find the tenth derivative, uh, Typing 10, 10 apostrophes is probably a pain. So the other way you can do it is to use this D function. So it's capital D for derivative bracket. So you go capital D bracket. You type the function in, f of x. I want to differentiate with respect to x. And let's say I want the 10th derivative. That's the notation for derivative. And there's the 10th derivative. It would take, uh, you'd probably go insane if you did this by hand, but there it is. Does it in a fraction of a second. And you can do any power, any of the higher power derivatives using Mathematica. You do not actually have to use function notation when you do the derivative. So for instance, if you have, um, let's say, uh, an expression involving uh, a bunch of letters, So like, like you're in a physics class, and let's say I want to find the derivative of this with respect to z, and let's say I want the second derivative. You can type in the symbolic expression and hit shift return. This z tell, is, tells the computer which variable you're differentiating with respect to, and it leaves the other variables uh, constant. And it, uh, um, so it treats them as, as if they're numbers. It, it'll, still use, it'll still give you the symbolic answer, but it treats them as constant. You're not differentiating with respect to those letters. So here we see that the, the result, the second derivative of that function with respect to z is 2a over z cubed. Using a computer makes finding derivatives very easy. Now everyone should know how to find derivatives by hand, uh, especially for the more basic uh, uh, problems. But let's go back to this function right up here again. Here's my f. And let's say I want to find the, the um, equation of the tangent line at, say, 2 comma f of 2. So
I'm going to show you how to how the computer how to, how to do this problem very easily using the computer without taking without physically taking a derivative. So the tangent line goes through the point two comma f of two, and we know that the slope of the tangent line is a derivative evaluated at two. So I want to find I have an equation y equals mx plus b. And what do I know? I know that m equals f prime of 2. And I'm going to use a numerical answer. So that's m. And I know that y equals f of 2. And I know that uh, x equals 2 in the problem. And the only thing I'm trying to find in this problem is b. When you find the equation of the tangent line, the only the only hard part is well, the hard part is finding the derivative and evaluating it too. But using the computer is no longer a hard part. The hard part then becomes finding b. So we have the equation y equals mx plus b. I know what y is because because it's going through the point two comma f of two, and I know what x is because it's going through the point two comma f of two, and I know what m is because it's the derivative evaluated at two. And so now I can find what b is. And B is 0 0.244898. And so then my equation is going to be, uh, the answer to, to my problem is going to be, um, let me just type it out here. The solution is Y equals, it's MX, so it's 0 0.163265X plus, and then what B is, which is 0 0.244898. That's the equation of the tangent line. You can verify this. I can copy this. You can verify this by plotting f of x. So I'm going to go plot and then uh, brace f of x. And then I'm going to type in that function, close brace, comma, x goes, say, from minus 2 to 4. And we see right here that that line just touches the graph right at 2 and nowhere else. Forget, forget about it. it. It crosses it over here, but we're only talking locally. That's what we mean when, when we're talking about tangent line. So if I actually zeroed in from, say, 1 to 4, then you would see it only touches it at that spot. That's what we mean by locally. We don't care about globally, but right there, this is an approximation to the function. And it touches the graph at only one spot. So you see, working symbolically makes uh, doing the problem a lot easier. It, makes, it allows us to concentrate on the essence of the problem, on what we are doing, not on the actual computation. And, and, and if, you can, if you can see the essence of the problem, that means you can do any problem. It just becomes a matter of, of computation.